It's important to remember that the number in front of the x squared must always be a 1. So we are going to have to divide everything by p, so that's going to become x squared minus 3 over px minus 4 over p. Then we can take the constant over to the right hand side, like that. Then in our next step we open up this bracket and we say x minus whatever this number is, or let me rather take that away, so you take whatever this number is and you divide it by 2, so that's going to be 3 over 2p squared, and then that's going to be equal to 4 over p plus, in a bracket, then I put this number again, so it's minus 3 over 2p. Then what we do with these questions that have letters in them is we leave the left hand side and now we're going to simplify on the right. So that's going to be 4 over p plus 9 over 4p squared. Can you see what I did? I squared there and I squared there. Then what we want to do is we want to be able to put these two together. But to put them together you need a common denominator. Now that common denominator is going to be 4p squared. So what that means is we're going to have to multiply this by 4p. And what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. And so then going into our next line, you're going to end up with 16p over 4p squared plus 9 over 4p squared. So now we can put those two together. So that gives us 16p plus 9 over 4p squared. At this point, you can now take the square root on both sides. So that's going to look like that. And then on the right hand side, we say plus minus, and that's going to be 16p plus 9 over 4p squared. Then, as in question number 13, the same thing is going to happen here. If you look at this number at the bottom, the square root of that, we know that the square root of 4p squared is simply going to be 2p. Some of you at home might be saying, yeah, but Kevin, can't we take the square root of 16 and can't we take the square root of 9? Guys, we can't because it's not one term. You see there's a plus in between. So the 4p squared, we're going to take the square root of that. And so in the next step, we'll be able to say the following. We can say plus minus the square root of 16p plus 9 and then over 2p. See how the 2p is no longer inside the square root. Now, this square root over here cancels out this 2. And so we're simply left with x minus 3 over 2p equals to the square root, or plus or minus, 16p plus 9 over 2p. So now I'm going to take the minus 3 plus, or minus 3 over 2p over, and I'm going to put it in the front. You don't have to, but you could also put it at the end, it doesn't really matter. And then plus minus the square root of 16p plus 9 all over 2p. Now what we saw in number 13, and we're seeing it again now, these two are the same. So we can put them together like this. We can put them together over one denominator like that.